Hello, and welcome to the Movie Universe. I'm your host, Movie Fan. Well, it's October, so you know what that means. Halloween's around the corner. So today, I'm going to be doing something a little special. I'm going to be covering Casper, A Spirited Beginning. Now, you might remember this, because this came out two years after the legendary Casper movie, which I definitely need to talk about one of these days. Before we can get into certain details, let me lay out the uh, basic plot for you. It starts off that Casper has just died, and he's on his way to, well, going to school to learn how to be a ghost. He gets thrown off the train, and he ends up in a small town where Stinky, Stretch, and Fatso happen to live. At the same time, there's also a kid named Chris who loves ghosts. He's obsessed with ghosts. He reads up on them, all kinds of things. But he also has bully problems and a neglectful father. And he's also acquainted with Stinky, Stretch, and Fatso who in this case are referred to as the ghostly trio. Casper and Chris meet and they become friends. And in a short time, Chris introduces him to the trio. They try to teach him how to be a ghost. And well, things aren't going very well. In fact, things are going a bit worse elsewhere because you see the house that the trio lives in, well, Chris's dad wants to demolish it to build a new mini mall. Meanwhile, Chris's teacher is trying to prevent this. Of course, uh, Stinky, Stretch, and Fatso were doing a good job of keeping that from happening all by themselves. But it's a little bit more worse than that because at the processing station where the ghosts are taught the basics, one of the ghosts at the station realizes that Casper is missing. And of course, his boss, Kibosh, is not very happy about this. In fact, I'll let him say why. I'm in charge here and nobody skips training. How would it look if I, the mighty Kibosh, let some wide-eyed rookie run loose without any schooling? Very embarrassing, sir. Embarrassing? It's disgraceful. Ah! So in the meantime, Casper's learning how to be a ghost from the trio, and later on he learns from Chris. Meanwhile, Chris's dad is trying to find a way to demolish it by hiring this nut job of an exterminator, and Kibosh is planning on capturing Casper and the trio and bringing them back to school. Now that's the overview of the plot. The rest of it, you're going to have to check out yourself. And I highly recommend you do, because actually this is a good movie. Despite what some people may claim, it's actually pretty darn good for what it is. I will admit, compared to the 1995 film of Casper, the special effects are a little cheaper, as you can clearly see. For some reason, the trio is blue, and I never could figure that one out. And you could tell they're not really there, unlike the 1995 film where it feels like they're there. But despite how cheap the CG is, it actually does work. Of course, what really does make it work is the cast of characters, mostly our voice actors. And what's really surprising is the cast is actually pretty well known. They've actually been in quite a few films and TV shows. Casper is voiced by Jeremy Foley. Chris Chris is played by Brendan Ryan Barrett. Chris's dad is played by Steve Gutenberg. Our crazy exterminator is played by Michael McKeon, who is best known for playing the character Lenny from the hit series Laverne and Shirley. Chris's teacher, Sheila Fistograph, is played by Lori Lachlan, who we all know as Becky from Full House. Snivel is voiced by Polly Shore. The Mighty Kibosh is, of course, voiced by the legendary James Earl Jones. Stinky is voiced by Bill Farmer, who we know as the current voice to Goofy. Fatso is voiced by Jess Harnell, who, believe it or not, actually played Fatso in Casper the Animated Series in the 90s, which is another one I'll have to talk about soon. And Stretch is voiced by Jim Ward, who I think most people would recognize him because he's been in a ton of animated shows. Now those are our main characters, but it also has a pretty good list of side characters who are played by some very well-known actors. For instance, we got Ben Stein in one scene, Rodney Dangerfield is the mayor, Richard Mall is the principal, Sherman Helmsley is a store owner, and one character who is of interest in the story would be Jennifer, who is played by Shannon Chandler, who I think you might recognize her for the series Big Bad Beetleborgs. She was the Red Striker Beetleborg. 
Now, truth be told, a lot of these characters do a good job. The voice actors are the ones who really shine the most because, well, what can I say? Most of them were very professional voice actors who really knew how to play their parts really well. And let's get real. James Earl Jones playing Kabosh. How awesome is that? And what's even more surprising about this is not so much the cast of characters and the story itself. It's the fact of who produced this. And that's because, believe it or not, this was actually produced by Chaim Saban. That's right. The man who created Power Rangers and Beetleborgs, which definitely explains how Shannon Chandler got in on this. And it certainly explains why Chris had Beetleborgs on his table, including the Blue Zeal Ranger. Makes perfect sense, right? It also explains why the CGI effects on Casper and them are pretty cheap compared to the 1995 film. Because, as we all know, Saban is notoriously cheap. So there you go. It's all a bit. It does have some hiccups, because compared to the first film, obviously the CG is very cheap. Because, again, Saban. And at the same time, there are a lot of things in there that don't add up. Like, for instance, it all started off originally that Stinky, Stretch, and Fatso were his uncles. But no, actually, they're not his uncles. They just adopt him later on. And at the same time, the house that we see in the first film, well, this is definitely not the same place. It's not even the same town, for that matter. So how do we get from this place to Casper's home where his dad lived? Of course, there is one plot hole that I must address, and that would be Kabosh himself. When you first meet him, he comes off like the villain in the story. But the truth is, he isn't. And in most of the scenes, you can't help but feel that he's the villain. Just take a look. When I want your help, I'll beat it out of you. When I find those slackers, I'll tie a sheep shank on their bed sheet butts. I hate guessing. Don't even say those words. Now, how can you not think that he's the villain in this story? When the truth is, he really isn't. I mean, he comes off like he is, but if anything, he's more like a hard-nosed principal because the place that he runs is really just a school for ghosts. And, of course, they thought Casper dropped out, even though he was thrown off the train, and the ghostly trio left the place earlier. And even then, they don't fully explain what the reasons were except the this at the very end. Then I was wrong to spit you three up. If you're confused, don't worry about it because I still don't get it either. That's one of the main problems here. They don't make this very clear. And yes, he does treat Snivel pretty cruelly. But then again, look at the way Stinky Stretch and Faso treated Casper in the first movie. So, for ghosts, I guess this is normal behavior. In fact, there's really no villain in the story. Like I said, it does have some problems, and those are a few. But I think despite that, it is still a good movie. It still has a good heartwarming story. And plus, I love the shenanigans of the ghostly trio. Boom! Ghost! <laughs> miss me! Miss me, skin eye! I learned this trick from my mummy. <laughs> Move it, pal. <laughs> this is a no parking zone. See what happens when he don't set your alarm? Well, at least you have a sunroof now. Before you run off, pal, you better check under there. Under where? Exactly. A mega wedgie. What a crack up. Yeah, you can't go wrong with Stinky Stretch and Fatso. They got some of the best material. They really do. And once again, Kabosh being played by James Earl Jones. That is so awesome. Once again, if you haven't seen this movie, I suggest you check it out. Who knows? You might actually like it. This is Movie Fan, signing off.